as always. So we're going to start with problem number two on, it actually starts at the very bottom of 171 and then continues to 172. So problem 3-2 on page, oh bless you, 170 and 171. Nope, actually. 171 and 172. All right, on this one. On June 30, at the end of the current fiscal year, the following information is available for Hart Company's accountants for making adjusting entries. So the first one, A. One of the company's liabilities is a mortgage payable in the amount of $520,000. As of June 30, the accrued interest on this mortgage was $26,000. So, adjustment A. Remember, adjusting entries always has at least one income statement account and one balance sheet account. So there's always going to be one of each. So anybody got a guess? What's the debit? Well, it says here, accrued interest on this mortgage was $26,000. So if you're accruing interest on a liability that you owe to the bank, how would you be treating that. Payable. Payable will be the credit. Interest payable. So that's the balance sheet account. So we're looking for the income statement account. It's going to be something expense. Yeah, because that would be the income statement account. It would be the expense. No. I've already got it written on the board. Interest. <laughs> Interest expense for 26000 So income statement account, balance sheet account. So we're creating a liability, and we're expensing the interest that is accrued during the period on the mortgage. On Friday, July 2nd, the company, which is on a five-day work week, pays employees weekly and will pay its regularly salaried employees $37,400. So if Friday is July 2nd, what day of the week is June 30th? Close. Oh, Monday. The other way. Wednesday, right? Because if Friday is July 2nd, it makes Thursday, July 1st. June 30th would be the Wednesday. All right? So the, the salaried employees have earned three days. They work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the month of June. So this is B. The debit is salaries expense. And salaries payable. So we had 37400 for the entire week's salaries. We want to divide that by 5 and then multiply it by 3. Are you going to put that in the journal as well? Yes. I would put the, like down in the little comments what the, what the calculation was. And that's going to result in 22,440. 
Because they only work, they only earn money three days. Yes, sir. Uh, where in the journal does it say that it only earn money three days? Because it says on July, on Friday, July second, they will pay on a five-day work week. So if they're paying them on July second, that means as of June thirtieth, they've earned three days. Because June thirtieth will be the end of the month, and that'll be Wednesday. Right. Yes, all of this is for the month ending June 30th, okay? So you've got salaries expense for three of those five work week, for work days. On June 29th, the company completed negotiations and signed a contract to provide services to a new client at an annual rate of $14,400. No entry. It's exactly what that is. Yep. No entry whatsoever needed for that particular one. Because we haven't done any work yet. It didn't say. On D, the supplies account shows a beginning balance of $3,230. Purchases throughout the year of 8230 An end-of-year inventory reveals supplies on hand of 2636 So the entry here is going to be to supplies, office supplies expense, or supplies expense. and a credit to supplies. So, we had beginning inventory of $3,230. We purchased $8,230. Add that together, you get 11460 available. That's all the supplies that we had available to be used. What we started the year with plus what we purchased throughout the year. Take ending inventory which was 2,636 and you'll get 8,824. And that's what you used. <clears throat> Ending inventory. So beginning inventory plus purchases is goods available, in, uh, supplies available. Subtract the ending inventory because you didn't use those. And this is what you used. Does that make sense? Because oh, you still have that on the shelf. You haven't used that up yet. You're trying to expense all of the supplies that you've used up throughout the year. Because you want to match the supplies you've used with the revenue that you've generated. It's all about matching in every one of these cases. It's about matching the expenses with the revenue that is generated and to make sure all the revenues are done. All right, E is similar. Prepaid insurance account shows the following entries on June 30. A beginning balance of 3240 and it says the beginning balance represents the expired portion of a one-year policy purchased a year ago. January 1, we had an entry of 5,800. That represents a new one-year policy. And then on May 1, we had a 6,732 policy. And that represents additional coverage of a three-year policy. So, E. 
The entry is going to be a debit to insurance expense. and a credit to prepaid insurance. OK, so we have the 3,240. This is the unexpired portion of a one-year policy, all right? So the rest of that expires. So we're going to take all of that. The 2,000, I mean, sorry, the 5,800 is a one-year policy purchased on January the 1st. It is now June 30th. So how much of that policy has now expired? Six months. So if we multiply that by six twelfths, we will get 2,900. And then the 6,732 was purchased on May 1st. So between, and it was a three-year policy. So between May 1st and June 30, how many months have expired? From May, the 1st of May, two. All of May and all of June, so two months. So this is going to be 236 because it's a three-year insurance policy, 36 months. And that's going to be equal to 374. Add all that together, you get 6,514. <laughs> oh, come on, that's a good entry. Yes, sir. Uh, a couple questions. Yeah. It, it tells us, it says, the May 1st entry represents additional coverage of a three-year policy. It's the last sentence in that little section there. Because that, from May 1st to June 30th, it's now June 30th. So how many months have expired in the period since you bought it? Does that make sense? Yes? All right, F. The following table contains the cost and annual depreciation for buildings and equipment, all of which were purchased before the current year. So, for this one, we have depreciation expense. on buildings, and then we have depreciation expense on equipment. And it tells us 14,800 is the annual depreciation on the buildings, and 41,300 is the depreciation expense on the equipment. 146, thank you. And these are both debits because you're expensing it. Okay? So the credits, because these are both income statement accounts. So the credits has to be a balance sheet account because all adjusting entries affect one, at least one income statement and one balance sheet. So the balance sheet account in this case is what is referred to as a contra asset account, a negative asset called accumulated depreciation.
and we'll have one for the building and one for the equipment. It's a negative asset account, a contra asset. Why, why are we using that there? Because what we do with property, plant, and equipment is we leave the original historical cost alone. So on the balance sheet, when we, and we'll start talking about what is a classified balance sheet in the next chapters. When we get to that, under property, plant, and equipment, we leave the historical cost alone, the full cost of all of the assets, long-term assets that we buy. And then we accumulate the amount that we've expensed below it. It gives the readers the ability to judge how old our assets are. Because if you're investing in a company, you want to be able to determine, on it, do they primarily have new equipment? Or do they have old equipment? Because if they have old equipment, that means they're going to need to replace it soon. And that can be very high cost. And you, you need to be able to judge that. So we do it this way in order to give the readers additional information. Okay? Two different accounts, yes. All right, number G, on June 1, the company completed negotiations with another contract and accepted payment of $43,200, representing one year's services paid in advance. That amount was credited to services collected in advance. So if you did that on June 1, how many months of your one-year contract have now been earned? June 1 to June 30th. One month. So we want to reduce the liability, which is services. Collected in advance. And we want to take it to services re revenue, service revenue. So if we take the 43,200 and multiply it by 1 twelfth, we will get $3,600. H, the company calculates that as of June 30th, it had earned $9,000 on a $15,000 contract that will be completed and billed in August. So this is revenue earned but not yet billed. So we're going to debit accounts receivable. And we're going to credit service revenue. The amount is given to us. We don't need to calculate anything. $9,000. Then the very last entry for this problem. Federal income taxes for the year are estimated to be 12,600. So that's going to be income tax expense. And the credit will be income taxes payable.
and 12,600. So like I said, there are four types of month-end or year-end adjusting entries, four types. One is accruing an expense. The interest expense, the salaries expense, are both an accrued expense. This is an expense that is being incurred in the period, but will be paid later, as is income tax expense. Those three are type one adjusting entries, an accrued expense. We also have deferred expenses. These are expenses that we've already paid the cash, but now we're taking the expense. Supplies expense, the insurance expense, and depreciation are all a deferred expense, type two entry. Type three entry is an accrued revenue. This is a revenue that we've earned, but we haven't yet collected the cash. We'll collect the cash sometime in the future. That's this accounts receivable here, this H entry. And then the last one is a deferred revenue. We've already received the cash. Now we've taken a portion of it to earnings. And that's this one. Services that were collected in advance is a type four. So there are four types of entry. Yes, sir? What was the second one again? The second one was a deferred expense. We've already spent the money. The cash has already changed hands. We bought the supplies. We bought the insurance policy, or we bought the building and the equipment. So all of those, cash has changed hands. It's now it's time to expense a portion of them. Okay? Those are just the four types of adjusting entries that need to, be, need to happen. Accrued means the cash is going to pay or be received sometime in the future. A deferred is the cash has already changed hands. No, I mean, I, I don't yeah. Yeah, yep, this is just, this is what is known as a, a, a period ending adjusting entry. And you would make the journal entries first, post it once again to the individual account ledgers, and then be able to do your adjusted trial balance. All right, does this make sense? All right, let's do another one. Number five on page 174. Problem number five on page 174. All right, on this one, Elite Livery was organized to provide limousine services between the airport and various suburban locations. It had just completed its second year of business, and its unadjusted trial balance appears below. The following information is available. A, to obtain space at the airport, Elite Livery paid two years rent in advance when it began the business. And sure enough, if you look down in account number 117, they have $6,000 in prepaid rent. So this is the end of their second year of operation. So that remaining prepaid rent needs to all be expensed. So this is A. We're going to debit rent expense. and a credit prepaid. For the $6,000. So that's a type two adjustment, a deferred expense. 
Yes. Yes. Because we're lowering the asset. It was an asset, and we're reducing the asset, and we're reducing, in essence, stockholders' equity. Because we're creating an expense, which is going to lower net income, which will lower retained earnings. So we're lowering both sides, the left and right side of the accounting equation. Okay? Number B. An examination of the insurance policies reveal that $900 expired during the year. So this is a little easier than the last one we did. It tells us what the calculation is. So this is insurance. Expense. And prepaid insurance. $900. Yeah? How do we know it's a prepaid insurance? Because it tells us that an examination of the insurance policies reveal that 900 expired during the year. And you can see on the adjusted trial balance that we had $2,450 in prepaid insurance. So... We're now expiring, or expensing that portion of those insurance policies that have now expired throughout the year. Okay? C, to provide regular maintenance for its vehicles, Elite Livery deposited $6,000 with a local garage. An examination of maintenance invoices reveals charges of $5,000 472 against that deposit. So we put a retainer down with a local garage to provide maintenance for our limousines. And as our drivers go in there to get little things fixed, they write up invoices and they deduct it against that amount. And there is a, a prepaid in maintenance account here with that $6,000 in it. So we need to expense it. So that's maintenance expense. Bless you. And prepaid maintenance. Five thousand. 472. An inventory of spare parts shows $1,008 on hand. So go up here and look at the asset account. It's account number 141. And it shows that we had $5,655 of spare parts available. So the entry is going to be spare parts expense. And a credit to the spare parts account. So we had available, bless you, 5,655. We have an ending inventory of 1,008. So that means we used up 4,655. 47 throughout the year. So we want to debit 4,647 and credit 4,647. Why do you put the uh, parentheses around the EI? Uh, that's a way to denote a negative number. Yeah. In accounting, we just don't put a little dash because that could be misconstrued as just a stray pencil mark. You know, we put brackets around it. 
So to make sure that everybody knows that's a negative number. Used, yeah. That's what we used up. It's the spare parts we used up throughout the year. Elite liv livery depreciates all of its limousines at a rate of 12.5% per year. No limousines were purchased throughout the year. In other words, we owned all of these limousines for the end of the year. So this is going to be depreciation expense. And accumulated depreciation and this is both for limousines. The limousine's account had 110,000 in it. If we multiply that by the 12 and one half percent, we'll get a total of 13,750. As our depreciation expense. Yes, sir. Accumulated uh, depreciation is a negative asset account. It offsets the asset account of limousines that you see up there. Limousines, had, it, that's a long-term property, plant, and equipment. The original historical cost for all the limousines was $110,000. At the beginning of the year, we had $17,500 as an offset against that. So you subtract the accumulated depreciation from the asset, and that gives you what is known as the book value. That's the remaining amount that needs to be expensed throughout the life. Yes, sir. No, they, no it, this is the full amount here, and we're going to, each year, we're going to take 12.5%. That's their depreciation rate. Each year, 12.5% of the total. Because the, the second, like, you would, like, drive it off or buy it, it, it starts to depreciate. Yeah. And the reason it wasn't, the, that last year was only 17500 was is that we bought limousines throughout the year. Yes, sir. No, that's just the systematic expense that we're going to take on an annual basis to match the revenue being generated by those, by those, that equipment, that pe that long-term asset. They're all going to be, and we've got a whole chapter for midterm number three on just depreciation calculation. So there's a variety of ways that companies can depreciate their property, plant, and equipment. Yes, sir. It, it doesn't. We just know from the problem that this is their second full year of operation. So, yeah, that there'd be no way to tell from a balance sheet account by itself as to how old the limousines are. Because you could be buying and selling them throughout the life of the assets. So we could be, we could be retiring some and buying some new ones. So there's really no way to know. All right. Everybody good with this one? All right. Number F, a payment of 5650 for one full year's interest on notes payable is now due. So F is interest expense. And the credit is to interest payable.
And it tells us how much it is, 5650 The interest payable would be in current liabilities. It's a liability just like salaries payable and, and uh, things like that. Accounts payable. G, unearned passenger service revenue on June 30 included $8,908 for tickets that employers purchased for the use of their executives but have not yet been redeemed. So in other words, they sell these coupon books in advance to give them a ride from point A to point B. When the executives land at the airport, they give one of these coupons to the driver and the driver takes them. So an analysis of that account has indicated there is another $8,908 of unused tickets out there with our customers that they have not yet used. In total, we had $15,000 in that account. So this was a deferred revenue. We got paid in advance when we sold the booklets of tickets to the employers, but have not yet been used. So G, this, uh, we're going to lower the liability. Unearned passenger service revenue <clears throat> and then we're going to take passenger service revenue. So we had a total of $15,000. $8,908 are still unused. So that means we have earned And the very last one, federal income taxes for the year are estimated to be 6625 So, income taxes expense. Is the debit and income taxes payable. is the credit. And it tells us 6625 is the amount. So H F H and F are accrued expenses. Expenses that we haven't yet paid for. We'll pay the taxes and we'll pay the interest at some point in the future. A, B, C, D, and E are all deferred expenses. We paid for the rent, we paid for the insurance, the spare parts, the maintenance, and we paid for the limousines. Now we're taking the expense. And then G was a deferred revenue. We collected the money up front, the 15000 from the customers when we first got the contracts, when we sold the tickets, the booklets of tickets. And now we're earning the revenue, claiming the revenue earned. Yes, sir? What was ABC? These were all deferred expenses. F and H are accrued expenses. And the difference between a deferred and a accrual is, has cash changed hands? In, 
deferred, we've already either paid the cash or received the cash, and an accrual is, is that sometime in the future we're either going to get the cash paid to us or we're going to pay the cash. So it's just a promise. It's a promise sometime in the future, yes. Okay? All right. I'm going to broadcast show one up.